This is my Read for Maui Readathon reading update wrap up. <laughs> I am still working through Lay and the Fire Goddess and I should be done with that in the next couple of days. But I wanted to report in that I did donate $120 to the Maui Mutual Aid Fund, which was one of the recommended organizations by the Read for Maui organizers, the queer collective on Book Talk. And so I initially pledged $20 per book that I read. I had five books on my TBR originally, but I added a sixth book. Turns out I didn't have enough time because I'm not through the last book. So the first two books that I read are Where Dreams Descend and When Night Breaks. This is a duology by Janella Angelis. I gave both of these books a three star rating. I listened to the audiobooks for these and I think that that did impact some of my enjoyment of the books because I kind of struggle with audiobooks really internalizing the plot, beats of the book, character names, places, all of that. It's honestly something that maybe in the future I will pick up and actually read ebooks for um, because I thought the concept was very interesting. Just couldn't really get a super strong grasp on the world building and the setting and um, the character development, especially like the characters' relationships. I just couldn't really connect to them and believe that they were in the relationships that they were in. I did enjoy them and I don't want to discourage anybody else from either reading or listening to the audiobooks. The audiobook narrator actually did a really great job with different voices and accents and adding inflection and interest to the story through their audio. The next book that I read was Smuggler's Contubernium by Kaula. Absolutely loved this book. This is going to be the first of a series and she has a couple of other series that I want to check out in terms of paranormal romance and urban kind of fantasy romance and sci-fi and polyamorous relationships. Decided to go through her backlist as well. I thought Smuggler's Contubernium was really well put together. It had a nice pace in terms of the plot for me. I am not a big character driven uh, no plot to be found kind of person. I like for the story to have a pace. I like to see us and the characters like moving through things and figuring things out instead of it mostly being like internal development focused or just vibes. But I really liked this book's pace. I liked the setting. I loved the main female character. She was a badass and the Polly M group uh, that she becomes a part of, <laughs> um, they were all awesome. There were eight different male characters that were part of this group with her and they were all very distinct in their personalities and their characterization which I think is probably something hard to do if you have eight different individuals and you need to provide each one of them with like a clear and distinct personality. I thought the author did a great job of providing us with different characterizations making us fall in love with each one of them separately for their odd quirks or personality traits. I gave Smuggler's Contubernium four stars. Now you all know that my favorite book of the readathon was Wings Once Cursed and Bound because I have not been able to shut up about it. This is a book by Piper J. Drake. It is a paranormal romance set in contemporary times, set in the Pacific Northwest outside of Seattle in the United States. We have a Thai uh, mythical bird princess main character and she was fantastic. So awesome to get to know her. This book is setting up what looks to be a series exploring different types of mythological creatures, especially like Asian mythology and folklore. I'm super excited that this is the beginning of a series. I can't wait for the next book to come out. I'm pretty sure I know who's going to be the main focus of the next book in the series. What I also loved about Wings Once Cursed and Bound was the relationship between the main male character and main female character. They were very respectful of each other's wishes and like recognizing that each has their own agency and can make their own choices independent of what the other person is doing. We also have a lot of vampire, werewolf, folklore kind of woven in, but I think the focus is going to be on Asian mythology and folklore. If you are a fan of the True Blood books or TV show, or if you like Cowboy Bebop, this is gonna be the book for you. And I know those are two strange comparisons to make, but I promise it will make sense if you read it. I thought the pacing for this book was incredible, like moved through it so well, but we also got such lush descriptions of the setting and the environment that our characters are in. It felt very cozy and homey, even when they were experiencing like trials and tribulations. I found myself really 
having fun picturing the environment and the setting that we were in in this book. And the author did a great job of describing those details to us, but not in a way that is too heavy or too poetic. Um, it was just enough, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. We had just enough description to build a world but not get lost in the details. I gave Wings, once cursed and bound, five stars, obviously. We knew that right from the get-go that that was gonna be the rating for that book. And then finally, the other book that I managed to finish was The Candle and the Flame. This is by Nafisa Assad, who is a Fijian Canadian author. This story is set on the Silk Road and we have gin and we have magic and we have fire and it was very, interesting. I listened to the audiobook of it. It was exciting to see some of the world building, to get to know some of the kind of myth or folklore in this culture that I'm not too familiar with, but I enjoy reading anyways. I didn't find myself being too connected to the main characters, the male main character and the female main character. I wasn't overly into either one of them or relating to them, but I found their relationship believable. To me, that is a plus, and I am giving this book a three star rating. This is another book where I listen to the audiobook, but I would actually like to go and read an ebook or a physical copy of this book. The narrator for the audiobook, not my favorite. I really felt like the tone was very monotone and robotic when we were listening to the narrative. When it came to the dialogue, I thought they did a great job with different voices for the different characters. It seemed distinct to me. For the narrative part of it, it was monotone and kind of flat. And like I said, I'm currently reading Lay and the Fire Goddess. I'm about halfway through that one. It is adventurous and fun. Even though it is lighthearted and there's like some dry sarcastic humor in it, we are getting a lot of the kind of painful coming of age for somebody who doesn't necessarily want to be a part or super into their family's culture anymore and would rather assimilate with their friends and be like one of the cool kids and that battle in between those two binaries of like not wanting to reject their family and their culture but also feeling very rejected and left out by their friends who look at them and think that they're just a little bit weird and they just wanna assimilate and be like everybody else and be included. That is a super interesting story so far. I'll give an update whenever I finish that book with my rating and what I thought of it overall, but so far I am having a lot of fun reading that one too. You have my receipts for the donation that I made for Maui Mutual Aid Fund. I've picked up authors and stories that I probably wouldn't have picked up unless I had been focusing on that, along with diversifying my reading list in general, I will make sure in the future to include uh, Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, Polynesian authors and stories as part of that diversity. 